Welcome to another math video lesson. I'm Mr. Pi. We're going to look at part three of inverse relations and functions. Let's get this going. The inverse of a function f is denoted by f inverse. Read f inverse as the inverse of f or as f inverse. If you've already noticed, I started calling it an f inverse already. The notation f of x is used for functions, but the relation f inverse may not even be a function, so we don't use the f inverse of x. Uh, we have to wait to determine if it's a function or not. In example 4t, we're going to consider the function f of x is equal to the square root of 2x plus 2. First, we want to find the domain and range of that function f. Uh, to do that, I like to make a quick sketch of the graph. Gives me a better idea of what's going on to see it, to describe it. To make a quick sketch of a square root function, you want to consider what's going to make this equal to zero. Substitute in for x what's going to make it equal to zero. Uh, to do that, you'll get x, 2x plus 2 is equal to zero. Solve that thing for x by subtracting 2 from both sides, then divide both sides by 2. That'll give x is equal to a negative 1. So that gives us our intersection on the x-axis, or in this case, the vertex of this half parabola, or this square root function. Also, what you want to do is substitute 0 in for x, then solve for f of x. If you substitute a 0 in for x and solve for x, or simplify the radical, that will give you 0 plus 2, which gives you the square root of 2, so f of x or y, or the y-intercept in this case, would be the square root of 2, which would be up just a little bit. The behavior of this function is going to open to the right because underneath here is positive stuff. There's no negative variable or negative coefficient on the variable, so this will open to the right. Now it's going to be real easy to describe the domain. The domain, remember, is the set of all x values. The least x value is negative 1, and as we follow that to the right, it never stops. So the domain, written in set notation, this needs to be a bracket, didn't turn out to be a very good bracket. All the x values, or x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 1. And that's because what's underneath the radicand cannot be negative, at least on this graph, because it's a real graph, a graph of real numbers. The range, using the graph to help us describe the range, the range starts here at y is equal to 0, and as we move along the graph or up the y-axis, uh, the graph never ends, so the range has a start point of 0, or and this needs to be a y, y is greater than or equal to 0, and we would read that. The range is equal to y such that, or the set of numbers y such that y is greater than or equal to 0. So I really find using a graph and understanding the behavior of the function helps in describing the domain and range. Now we need to find f inverse, and that's going to require us to take this original function, switch the x and the y, and then solve for y. When I write this down here, I'm going to write it with a y instead of the f of x. y is equal to the square root of 2x plus 2. To find the inverse of an equation, all we do is simply switch the x and the y, giving us x is equal to the square root of 2y plus 2. At this point, we'd want to square both sides. Squaring this side just gives us x squared. On the right-hand side, squaring a square root gives us 2y plus 2. It gives us the radicand. We'll subtract 2 from both sides here. And finally, we'll divide both sides by 2. And that'll give us 1 half x squared minus 1 is equal to y. Use the symmetric property y is equal to 1 half x squared minus 1. 
So this is F inverse. That is F inverse is equal to Y or 1 half X squared minus 1. Hopefully you recognize that's a parabola in the form Y is equal to AX squared plus C. We know the vertex and we know the behavior of this parabola. This is going to be a parabola that opens upward and intersects the y-axis at 0, comma, negative 1. That's the vertex. So since we know a little bit about that parabola, we can graph it, and that'll help us describe the domain and range of F inverse. We know it's going to have a vertex of 0, negative 1, and we know it's going to open upward. And that's about all we need to be able to describe the domain and range. So the domain and range of F inverse, which is the orange graph up here, the domain starts at x is equal to negative 1, and it goes on forever in both directions, or infinity. So x such that x is greater than or equal to, or actually it's not that, it's I made an error. I was confusing my domain and range for a moment. The domain, as we go along the x-axis, I was going along the y-axis here, as we go along the x-axis, starts up here and never ends, Start and goes up here and never ends. It goes on forever, so we write that as all real numbers, so x such that x is equal to all real numbers. The range, on the other hand, going to be the set of values y that start at negative 1 and go on forever as you move, increase the values of y. So we'll write that as the inequality y is greater than or equal to negative 1. The thing you need to notice is the difference. Uh, we do switch the domains and ranges. The domain of the original function becomes the range of the new function. But notice when we don't interchange the ranges, because this is the principal square root, we only got half of that. Um, if we graph the other half, we wouldn't have a function. And we would not be able to do, do all this. But the inverse of a square root function is a parabola. And square root functions are two separate functions, one for the positive and one for the negative. If is this a function, it certainly is a function. And the reason it is a function, the reason it is a function, it would pass the vertical line test. And we should know by now that uh, parabolas are functions because they have a one-to-one -one range to domain cor correspondence. This has been Mr. Pi, working with the domains and ranges of functions and inverse functions.